I make the laws from here. Charles Manson appeared on the Geraldo show on May 9th, 1988. It uh, was the height of tabloid TV, and, and Geraldo fit into it perfectly. He had always been a probing journalist in, in his days at ABC from working at their New York City affiliate and on all, all the shows, 2020 and Nightline and all, all the way until he got canned over making comments about how Kennedy money and influence had, had uh, squelched a story. He First he did that Al Capone vault show that was real disappointing, nothing in the vault. But it, it launched the Geraldo show, which which ran for over a decade. And this episode's one of the most famous. He went into the prison and interviewed Manson and, uh, you know, tried to do the tough guy thing. And Charlie's, Charlie's weapons, his brain, always has been, whether it's uh, playing folk songs or talking his way out of trouble in, in what he called his upbringing in the hood or in, in prison where he's spent the majority of his existence. Being a Beatles kid, I, I became aware of uh, Manson through the Vincent Bugliosi book, Elder Skelter, that came out in 74. A couple of years later, there was a two-night TV movie slash miniseries. We called them TV movies back then, but called Elder Skelter, starring Steve Rails back as Charlie. And it was great. So this is Charlie Manson with Tough Guy Geraldo in the prison, May 9th, 1988. You think I would still be here if I was guilty of anything? And look do me I in the eye. Still look, be me, here. look me straight away in the eye. Do I look like I'm guilty about anything? You look more guilty than <laughs> anyone I ever looked in the uh, eye really? in my life. Really? Others have killed more, and they've done it more recently. But Charles Manson is a name that has taken its place in American infamy. He is our most notorious mass murderer, and yet he never personally killed anyone. This hippie cult leader, this self-proclaimed antichrist, this evil messiah, convicted of ordering the deaths of nine innocent men and women. 19 years after his crimes, he remains wacky and weird, fascinating and repugnant. Today's program is a fresh look into the mind of an American monster, Manson. Sane or psycho? That's our focus today on Geraldo. Areas such as that, that uh, I, I cannot confess to because it would be a lie. I don't remember her being hung. Accused and ultimately convicted of masterminding that butchery and two other murders the following night was this man. Career criminal and con man, Charles Manson. Here's Watson on Manson. I was the male uh, at the crime. Uh, but at that time, I did not consider myself a leader. I considered myself more of a follower uh, of uh, Charles Manson uh, and carrying out his orders. While Manson was the evil madman behind the plan, it was his ragtag bunch of followers, Watson and four young women, including Susan Atkins, who actually committed the crimes. Susan Atkins come home to you bloody hands. Yeah. She says, Charlie, look what I did for you. Yeah. So I give you the world. I, I just the... killed myself, and I give you the world. So? How'd you react? I say, you dumb <laughs> I already had the world. You just put me back in jail again. And that's what she did. She put me right back in jail. Manson and his followers were tried, convicted, and sentenced to death, or life imprisonment without parole. Then in 1972, three years after the crimes, the Supreme Court outlawed the death penalty. Now, incredibly, all in the Manson family are eligible for parole. At one of his own parole hearings, Manson spoke about his family of killers. I don't want out of your prison unless I can go with my brothers and sisters. If I have a world and not my family, I have nothing. Manson's disciples, mostly middle-class, college-age kids, were indeed the only family he could claim. Most of his life had been spent behind bars. I didn't have no parents. Well, you don't have any parents, you got nobody, there's no place I'm gonna take you off the street and throw you somewhere. Shuttled from Forster family to one institution or another, Manson even landed in Boys Town in Omaha, Nebraska. It was for him a brief stay. 
The bright-eyed 14-year-old was thrown out. After just three days, he was a disciplinary problem. I've been in jail since 1943. What year were you born? Uh, 34. Nine years old? Yeah. What was the first bus for? The first place? The first bus. <clears throat> uh, my mother got out of jail. My mother got out of the joint and um, put me in, in with the monks, in with the Catholic monks, the brother monks there in Terre Haute, Indiana. Yeah? They treat you bad? No, they treated me like they treat all the other kids. But I seen them as a bunch of old women. So I ran off from there. I escaped out of the hood. Got out of that hood and went on. Went to, went to Chicago. I you weren't that. raised up at Pleased. all? Pleased. Uh, no, I wasn't. I raised You're myself up. You like the wolf boy. Yes, right. I raised myself up. Sure. Sure. I got a different way of doing everything. I got my own way, you know. Does that make me bad? Makes you violent and bad, yeah. I'm only as violent as I have to be. If I don't have to be violent, I'm not. But I was raised up to where if you didn't fight, you got <laughs> If you didn't fight, you got taken away and your stuff was taken away. And I got 40 years of fighting in here. I can't read and write, but I can fight. <laughs> he can fight. They crowd me and I got this little space. My life is bigger than this little space. I live in the desert. I live in the mountains, man. I'm big. My mind is big. But everybody's trying to crowd me down and push me down and make me into all these little things that they need me to be. And that's not me at all, man. That's not me. I killed nobody. I broke no law. What you can't understand, Mr. G, is that I have been raised up in a different world than you've been raised up. I've been raised up in the penitentiary. There's no weakness in the penitentiary. There's no sorrow or remorse in the penitentiary. You come to the cell and you go in and you find Jesus or you don't. You either find Jesus or you run with the devil. Don't you think Jesus would be appalled that you were invoking his name? I didn't invoke any name. They put that on me. The spirit, the spirit laid that over on my track. I'm That's the man right. in the mirror, guy. I know, man. You know, I just, if you like me, I like you. If you don't like me, I don't like you. You swing at me, I'll swing back. Oh. You dig? You cut at me, I'll cut you. You know, whatever you point to me, I'll get back to you. But it's more than that, though, isn't it, Charles? Well, sure, I'm in harmony with God. That's just a word. We don't, you know, we use the word God. Or the devil. Oh, the devil, yeah. You could use the word devil or demons or whatever you want to call it. Mostly the devil in your world, eh, Charles? Well, okay, I'll play. I'll play. There's no, there's no game I can't play. The people no that say you, I haven't played. you are the devil here. Okay, I'll be the devil then. You like that? I don't like or dislike nothing. I see everything as it is. Your courtrooms have convicted me for being Jesus Christ in one courtroom. Well, and then, you're con then in the other courtroom, you convicted me for being the devil. Now, if you believe in your own courtrooms, you've convicted me for being the father of this country. <laughs> <laughs> we'll say that I am all these things that you think I am. Right. Wouldn't that be more fearful than letting me try to be a nice guy? Would you want to make me into those things? Would you want me to, do you need someone like that in your world? That's your judgment now. The judgment you're making on this mirror, man, you got to carry. You want to make me a terrible, violent, no good, so-and-so, and rule -so, run? When actually, in reality, I'm a deadhead, man. I've been dead since 1951. What planet is that? The one that I live on. Do you think that this world, San Quentin, has any relation to the world outside? This world, San Quentin, is where all the children of God are. It's where you keep all your children that you don't want, the ones that you get to carry the heavy load. Long hair and sandaled feet, Manson's group on the surface seemed like most other middle-class college-age kids of the 60s. In fact, before meeting Charlie, Patricia Quinwinkle had been a Sunday school teacher and planned to become a nun. Tex Watson had been student body president and voted most likely to succeed. Then they met Charlie. I get out of jail, and these kids come around me. Yeah. They say, you're God. You have the voice of God. And I say, uh, there's a whole penitentiary of guys like me. You know, I'm, I'm nothing. I'm just a messenger. I'm a witness. That's all. I'm just a, a poop butt that dropped out of the penitentiary. And they seen something in me I didn't see in me. What they say, sir? They seen a nice guy. And I'm not a nice guy. I agree. But they seen that. So I said, well, as long as they seen the nice guy, I'll reflect the nice guy. I'll be the nice guy to them. So I played as much nice guy as they could deal with. 
and I held the line of nice guy. And I looked out for everybody, and I gave them places to stay, and I kept all the other not-so-nice guys off of them. I knew Lenny Kasabian. I seen her three times in my life, maybe two minutes in my whole life I seen it, Brock. She come up to the ranch for about a week, and she said, hey, my name is Linda. I said, oh, Linda. She said, can I stay here? I said, can you stay here? She said, I'd like to live at the ranch. I said, I'd like to live at the ranch. She said, well, can I stay here? I said, can I f She says, yeah, and I put my hand up her dress, and I said, yeah, okay, you can stay around. That's the biggest thought in my head was getting at her body. I wasn't thinking about sending her down to be no troops about saving nothing or stopping nothing. So what'd they do? They did whatever they did. That's the dispensation of the Pope. It's the same thing he does with the Cardinals, man. It's the same thing they do with the committee. Did you tell those women to kill somebody? No, no. Melt or somebody, someone hey, who reneged on hey, a drug hey, debt? Hey, hey, let me tell you something about it. Tell woman. me something. The women I got, I don't got to tell them what to do. If I got to tell them what to do, I'll set them up on the highway and get them away from me. I don't deal with women I got to tell them what to do. They know what to do. If they don't know what to do, they better get stay away from me. And in your case, they knew to kill. They knew to take care of me. They knew to kill they for you. They knew to look out for number they one. They knew to kill for you. No, no, kill. They knew to kill See, pregnant women. Kill. The only guy that cared. I was the one that picked the kids up out of the streets and gave them a little place to stay. But I learned better than that. You gave them a place to stay and well, then you turned them loose. No, I didn't turn them loose. Yeah, I, yeah, I turned them loose, yeah, in, in respect, I, you know. And there's nine bodies to show for they, No, there's more than that. They become free in their minds. We started a rebirth movement. Yeah, a re-death movement. No, no, it was a rebirth in Jesus. Go. So you've got to realize, I live in a very violent world. You know, uh, the violence has always been around. I'm in the eye of that, been in it all my life. So I keep it off of me with motions and force fields, dig? In other words, I don't really get involved in that because I don't lie. I've sat in that cell 18 years. If you sat in that cell two weeks, you'd be banging your head on the wall. You're right. <laughs> yeah. You know, so you come and live with yourself in a little old square box for 18 years with everybody getting down on you. And they haven't touched me, man, because I know what I did. I don't break laws. I make laws. I'm the lawmaker. I'm the one that laid the track down. They drive the train. I lay the track down. I make the loss. If I take this chair and I knock that light down, mm -hmm. I'll make a whole new procedure with it. Yeah. I make the loss from here. This is me. Nixon was only playing with me. That's me. Now, I admit I influenced everybody out there at that ranch. I take responsibility for those nine people getting killed. Do you feel remorse? I don't know what that is. You know what I think? That you are an evil person. Right, I'm evil. I'm terrible. You are terrible. Oh, yeah, I'm awful. I'm awful. You're a murdering dog, Charlie. Oh, I'm a terrible dog. I'm a fiend. You're a mass murdering a dog. A mass murdering dog. And where did you get these ideas? What if I said, Charlie, your physical being is free mm -hmm. as of right now? You go outside the gate, your body, where would you go? What would you do? Go probably look for a place to sit down. What would you do? I give you anything I got for a little peace of mind. Is he not? And you're either going to have to give me my rights in a courtroom or you're going to have no courtroom. Why is. You're going to have to give me my rights. I heard that already. I heard that already. You right. know. Murder. Murder. Why is it so common? Because you're out of balance. Your social consciousness is out of balance. Don't give me that line, please. The premise of your reality sets in the judge's benches, man. The judge's benches represent crime. The police represent, they do the will of the judge. The attorney general does the will of that. The governor does the will of that, all the way up through the Pentagon, all the way up to where the bombs drop off on the rice farmers. It all starts down here in the courtroom. Is it easy to take a life? I never took anybody's life. Is it easy to stick a knife in somebody's body? Uh, I generally don't stick people. I cut them a couple times first and make them show them that I can, but I, I've never really stuck anybody, not stuck my knife in them. I cut them a couple times, show them I could, and then tell them, you know, don't make me do this no more. Help me understand something, Charlie. Why do people murder? 
Why did those girls murder for you? Why did Tex they Watson murder, murder for, for you? Murder for me? You told them to. No, 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 no. Come back, DA. Come back. That's not reality. What is? No, reality is they did what they did. They're responsible for their own actions. I'm responsible for my actions. Ever kill anybody? Mm, I've come off of close a few times. Come on, didn't you, John? What do you mean, come on, didn't you, man? I ain't lying to you. If you think I'm lying to you, you're wasting my time and your time. Okay, let's not lie. Let's be There's cool. no reason let's to. Let's be straight. There's no reason. What are you guilty of, then? I'm guilty of, uh... What am I guilty of? I'm guilty of thinking that I had rights in a courtroom. That's what I'm guilty of thinking. You left a trail of dead bodies. I a trail Come of dead on, bodies, Come on, Charlie, stop hitting me. Okay. Really? Okay. You are a damn evil person and you are a Come on, come on, feel No, I mean, I get pissed off, man. I can play, but I get pissed off, man. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, ghost. Let me ask you a question. What do you think of the death? death penalty I don't think really that I think that belongs to God explain God gives life and God takes life but how come you didn't live your life with that commandment I did that's not what I heard well that's what you heard it's a little different from what you heard and what is do you feel fortunate that you survived because the law is declared there was no doubt in my mind I would survive I'm in harmony with the truth I didn't kill anyone. He's so f I chopped up nine hogs, and I'm going to chop up some more, you I'm going to kill you as many as I can. I'm going to pile you up to the sky. I figured about 50 million. If I could get about 50 million of you, I might be able to save my trees and my air and my water and my wildlife. You want to kill 50 million people? Well, that's, that's just a drop in the bucket to what's really coming. Let ask you. You're going to die in prison. Die in prison? Boy, oh boy. You're gonna die Again, in there you go. You got to die in your mind. My life is not important, man. I want to know about your life here. My life here is just sitting in a cell. How are you, how you treated here? I'm treated here uh, differently on different levels. The first level is pretty good. The younger men, are, are they got a lot of respect. The fat ones and the ones that hide around the corner, they're sloppy and they lie and they're incompetent. But there's a lot of good ones. It's like any other any other place, man. There's good and there's bad. You seem you know? to abuse the correction officers, though. I do. I get off on them something terrible, and they get off on me something terrible. But, I've had my teeth knocked out. But don't you make your life off. miserable by being that hostile? Man, I don't know what misery is. What the hell ever meant? That's weakness. I ain't got no misery in me. Got I, any I, friends I here? Paradise, man. If I was guilty of something, and after all the pressure they put on me, and they put that medication on me, and all the doctors, and drug me up down the hallways, and done everything they could do to kill me, I've had this whole country down on me trying to murder me for all kinds of different, everything they don't understand, what they don't know, what they can't realize, every little insecurity they got, here they come, bringing it to me. Digging, I got to carry it on my back. Do you think I would still be here if I was guilty of anything? And look me in the eye. Still look, be me, here. look me straight away in the eye. Do I look like I'm guilty about anything? You look more guilty than <laughs> anyone I ever looked in my uh, really? eye in my life. Really? Yeah, you see what I'm saying? And the, which, the guys you're trying to make me into is impossible. What you're doing is you're creating a legend, you're creating a beast, you're creating whatever you are judging yourselves with into the word Manson. And that's not me at all. You're not a beast, Charlie. You are a beast. See? You, I'm whatever you need me to be for you. And whatever you make me is what you'll carry the rest of your life and forever. You named yourself, Charlie. That's right no, no, there. no. You don't even know what that means. I know what it means. They've been trying to kill me for 20 years. They haven't been able to do it yet. Would you like to try? Jolly. You didn't bring the guitar. They wouldn't let us. They wouldn't let you. We brought it, but they These wouldn't let us bring it. work for you, man. Hey, hey. Damn, man. I don't want to pick on Still don't communicate. Hey, you know, we, we talked about what I did. You, you want to talk about, about what I could do? What? I could do just about anything I want on my road. I could send for your head and put it in a box if I wanted. I wouldn't, but I could, just like you could too.
thanks for watching. If you like what you saw on Cleveland Live Music, make sure to click on the subscribe icon. And Patreon and, and GoFundMe information is, is below as well. Keep it going. Keep it going.